So today I'm going to talk about um, some of the links between computing and philosophy. Um, it's true that there are links between philosophy and many subjects, um, but the ones with computing are actually significant and sometimes quite surprising. Philosophers are um, interested in questions about all kinds of things. They like to think and they like to ponder things and they like to come up with questions, they like to come up with answers and it's important, it's not just answers they're after, they're really interested in questions as well. Um, now I'm not going to try and give you a whole um, introduction to philosophy. My colleague who will be talking next will give you a much better talk on philosophy than I can. Um, but there are some particular aspects of philosophy that are, are very, very interesting to computer scientists that I'm going to be talking about. Um, for the purposes of this talk, um, we can think of philosophy as being divided into three very broad areas. Now, this, may, this, this kind of division may be something that philosophers would want to um, discuss, argue about, disagree with, perhaps agree with. But for the purposes of this talk, this is one way of looking at things. Um, just three very broad general strands. The area of um, what is called axiotics, it's not a term that is used all that much, but it covers things like aesthetics and, um, and ethics. Um, and it, it, it thinks about how things ought to be and what there ought to be in, um, in how we do things and uh, the kinds of things we make and the way we conduct our business in the world. Um, and it's something I'm going to come to right at the end of this talk. It's, it's very important. Epistemology, which is the study of knowledge, and computer scientists who are interested in modeling the mind are interested in this because they want to know about knowledge, they want to know about how the mind works, and they want to try and make computer models of how the mind works. Um, and then um, ontology, which is looking at what is in the world, what exists in the world, how you decide whether something is a such and such or isn't a such and such. So these are the kinds of things that philosophers are interested in and the kinds of things I am interested in too. And underpinning much of this is the field of logic, which is really about reasoning about things, working out whether things make sense, but not in a, in a loose way, in a quite a formal way. And some people say that logic is a field within philosophy. Others would say that logic is something that comes through various parts of philosophy. So um, underpinning the hardware of all digital, digital computers is something called Boolean logic, which I'm going to get to once I've spoken a little bit about um, logic systems that predated Boolean algebra. So the, um, the ancient Greeks were interested in syllogism. They thought about how reasoning and argument worked. And um, they, they believed that, or, or they, they, they argued that we can formulate arguments in terms of premises and a conclusion. And in, I've got four examples up here. The first one is, is quite a well-known one. Socrates is a man. That's a premise, something we, we state. All men are mortal, and that is another premise. And we can draw the conclusion, therefore, Socrates is mortal. And this is a syllogistic argument that has been shown or believed to be um, a, 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 val it's a valid argument, and it is one that is, that is true. Um, we can construct other arguments. So here's another one. Some Americans are rich. Some poor people are American. Therefore, poor, some poor people are rich. Um, these are simply formula formulating a couple of premises and a conclusion in the way that the Greek philosophers would have done. And I've got two more examples. All rabbits have long ears. Joe has long ears, therefore Joe is a rabbit. And all rabbits have long ears, Joe is a rabbit, therefore Joe has long ears. And what the, the Greeks were interested in was why do some of these work and some of them don't? And uh, a question that I'd like to pose to you, of these which arguments do work and which don't, 
and something that you, should, you, you might try to think about. Why is it that, for example, in these last two, one of them does work and one of them doesn't? And why is it? Anyone like to try and... They don't connect through being American. So the, the connection would be through being American. Yes, yes. Um, that you're, yes, that you're connecting with some, yes. Yes. There's a difference between validity and truth. Um, and I don't want to spend the rest of this, this talk talking about these things, but these are the, the kinds of things to, to, that, that are really interesting to think about. Um, so you can formulate an argument that is a valid argument, but it may not end up being a true argument, which is, I think, the point that you're trying to make. Um, so the, leaping forward a bit, there were attempts to apply formalism to some of this kind of reasoning. Not just think about it and, well, I, I say just think. It was that just thinking was not an insignificant task of, of these ancient philosophers. But there, there were then attempts to formalize it and to, um, to try and connect it to a, a more formal reasoning system. Um, and mathematical logic started to play a role here. So the, the, um, in the time of Aristotle, there was no connection with mathematical logic. These tools were simply not available. Um, propositional logic was one attempt to try and to formalize. Propositional logic looks at um, logic as it acts on opera operators. And the, oh, sorry, as it acts on propositions. So A is a proposition, B is a proposition. A proposition is something that we propose that may be true or may be false. Um, and propositional logic looks at how we can combine them. So we can say A is true and B is true, or A is true and C is true. A, B, and C can't each take on the values true or false. This is simply, um, it, it's a fairly simple form of logic, and it was found not to be sufficient for expressing a lot of stuff. But as it turned out, um, it became the basis of um, Boolean logic, which George Boole developed in the mid 1800s. Um, we, he was working on to trying to find an algebra to, to replace the syll syllogistic logics. And he came up with this thing called Boolean algebra. And what is interesting here is that Boolean algebra forms the basis of all the circuitry in our modern computers. Um, so Boolean algebra has some very um, great um, connections and similarities with propositional logic. It has propositions, which are symbols, which could be these kinds of things, but in terms of the, um, the computi computing machinery, it's, it's ones and zeros. Um, it has truth values, true and false, which Bull realized you could connect with one and zero. And it has these operators, and or and not. And with those three operators, you can get by with um, creating circuitry that can do addition, subtraction, and all kinds of other things. Um, infinitely many expressions can be built out of just that basic algebra. And there are some axioms and rules. What I want to show you um, briefly now is a truth table. The, this is another one of the fundamental tools of, um, of Boolean algebra. So if we have two propositions, A and B, if A is true and B is true, then not A is false. A and B is true. A or B is true. And A implies B is true. Implies is one of the derived um, axioms, whereas the, that symbolizes and, and that symbolizes all. And this is a truth table that takes all possible values of A and B. Um, if we replace the, the trues with ones and the falses with zeros, 
we start to be working in the world of binary. And basically, people started using Boolean algebra to create gates made out of electronic um, components and transistors. And that's an example of an AND gate. So what um, they started doing was using logic gates to connect it together to make digital computers. True and false are one and, one and zero, and all numbers can be represented by ones and zeros. So um, this is a, 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 just a very brief representation of the number six in terms of ones and zeros is one and one, one, zero. That's the number seven. That's the number 13. And what we do is we say how many ones are there, how many twos are there, we're doubling each time, how many fours are there, and how many eights are there in that. And we either have one of them or zero of them. That's how you convert from a number to its binary representation. In the number 23, there is 116, um, 14, 1, 2, and 1, 1. If you add them all together, you would get to 23. That is very simply binary numbers. Um, and we can take a number of gates, putting ones and zeros in here gives us the output of whether that is a one and that is a one, or that is a one and that is a zero, we get the output related to the truth table that I showed you earlier. Um, and this all together is circuitry to provide um, a counter. I've got another digital circuit. That's an adder. That will take three, uh, two lots of binary numbers and put them through circuitries. These, these are AND gates and these are and gates negated and give us the result. And what I did want to show you very briefly is what I have here, and I realize I'm running, running low. Um, what I have, have here is some memory out of a computer. That's computer memory. I'm sure most of you have seen. This, these are um, silicon chips. And this is taken out of a laptop, and it is two gigabytes of memory. And two gigabytes is 1,000 million bytes. Each byte is made up of eight bits. So each bit is one, one, or zero. So this circuitry will have times two, times eight, 16,000 million of these gates on it. And that is storing that data. So this has been a whistle-stop tour from logic, the ancient philosophers, to what we have now, nowadays. Boole gave us this Boolean logic, and that has given us this. And this is the gift of fire. This is the gift of fire that I wanted to talk about, and will in one minute. From this logic, we've been able to build machines that have power be beyond imagination certainly beyond imagination of those people who first started putting those few gates together. And when they first built the circuits, they were massive. And then they found the silicon te technology able to shrink the stuff down. And now that we have this, the other connection with philosophy is the connection with ethics. We have this thing, and it is important that we do the right thing with it. Moral philosophy is about ethics. It's about what it means to do the right thing. And there are all kinds of issues that you've been seeing coming up to do with the, the, the result of this, this stuff, this, the, the discovery of how Boolean algebra can give us these kinds of machines. Privacy issues, copyright issues, freedom of speech issues, job losses, job creation, and there are many more. So from the logic to the eth ethical issues, these are the connections with computing and philosophy. Thank you.